how we do this, we are the truest, got these fangs super sharp, your shit toothless, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish, in the graveyard, acting foolish, finna dance with the devil to no music, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Radio Coffee and Beer. Welcome to Radio Coffee and Beer. Yeah! All right, all right. There's some life in here. Well, I'm Andrew, and I'm the night manager here at Radio Coffee and Beer. And uh, before the pandemic, we had a little show called Something Indecent with Max Booth 3, the third, right here. And uh, I got to tell you, folks, things aren't going too well for me, but... Uh, this is my last chance to make the bosses happy. And uh, this is a show that I said, I'll bring it back. It's going to be real good, real wholesome stuff. So, uh, Max, we're back. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. We're back. Yeah. Well, I thank you for uh, agreeing to come here. You look quite different. I did not realize uh, a mic. This was a mic. I thought one still had to be, you know, plunged into it. But yeah, I, it's been a long pandemic. As you can see, I bought a wig. It's white. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, that's looking good, man. So why of all the shows that you wanted to bring back, you chose to put, like, your final <laughs> nesting egg into me? Well, because you're Mr. Hollywood now. That is true. You right? got, uh, we need to do something. It's a movie it's out a movie, now. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Billy Rich. you got other things on the pipeline. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, you're becoming very, very rich and famous in Hollywood. They do call me uh, Max Booth. They do, yeah. That's yeah. what I heard. Uh, Steven Spielberg called me one day and said, that Max Booth guy. <laughs> he owes me money. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I guess we should go ahead and do uh, something indecent, right? Give it up for Max Booth, yeah. everybody. All 15 of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The last time we did this was in 2019, and I am so excited to be doing it again. It's the only thing that brings me joy. And now look at look at me now on a stage talking into a mic at people not looking at me. It's great. I've, I've had a busy pandemic. I, I got a new dog. That, that was mostly it. Um, the funny thing about dogs, I don't know if you know this, but all dogs, they have a kick spot. And I found, my, I, it took me a long time, but I found the kick spot on Frank, who's my dog. Unfortunately, uh, it does require me to uh, masturbate him until completion before he begins kicking. So it's really awkward, especially since I have to look him in the eye the whole time. I don't recommend doing that to my dog. For one thing, it's a crime. And full two is not as enjoyable as you might think. It's just, it's kind of humdrum. But this is a show called Something Indecent. If I had to guess, it would last for the rest of time. We're going to be doing Something Indecent every month going forward. Nothing could possibly stop it. So I think let's go ahead and get this show going, right? Wait, what? Hold on, hold on. Hey, you, uh, you Max Booth? Yeah, Max Booth, look at the sign! Alright, 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 uh, I got a delivery for you. I got a Eggagram. An Eggagram? Eggagram. Oh, give me a second here. Alright. This is a uh, highly uh, surprising. I apologize for this outburst. Hey, nothing to apologize for. It's an Eggagram. It's an Eggagram, he says. Okay, it's an Eggagram. There we go. Freak on there. Who, who sent me this egg? I, you know what? That's not part of the deal. I gotta, I gotta. They wrote a note for me to read to you. Okay. Do you wanna, do you wanna speak yeah. into the mic? Okay. 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 That's just for you, though. Okay. What is the maximum amount of love that one entity can experience for another? Mother to son, sister to brother. 
I wonder when infatuation begins to smother, when we go under the covers and strangle on heartache. On unrequited lust and adoration, it's an alteration of natural laws, just like the things I would do to your body. Not, not me, but whoever wrote. <clears throat> know that somebody would embody the passion you have for life as a passion sprung anew. And much like this gift, I must know how many of me can fit inside you. So, uh, this is this is say who it's from. Look, buddy, I get the egg, I get the poem, that's it. Is someone, sir? Sir, sir yes. Sir, come on. Oh, ah, oh, I see. Ah, 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 ah. Mmm. Enjoy. The eggs are poached fresh. They're delicious eggs. Uh, we make them uh, ourselves. We lay them ourselves. We season them and. You okay there, buddy? <laughs> it does take a while because we have good quality eggs laid by good quality lizards, <clears throat> not lizards, chickens. We do not bring lizard eggs. Sir? It's good, right? It tastes... Sir? Uh, give, give me one second. Do you need me to, do you need me to read the poem again? Oh, she's not a uh, uh, angry. Uh, go to a website. Oh uh, 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 God! Oh my God! What the fuck was in that egg? Uh, uh, uh. Are you okay? Are you alive? Oh fuck! I'm really gonna lose my job now. Jesus Christ, Max! Wake up! Wake up, Max! Max, I love you! Wake up! <laughs> yes? I am Death. Death, could you hit the microphone? Please? <laughs> death is not used to your mortal electronics. I am Death. Hi, Death. <laughs> Why have you taken Max from us? Uh, because of that suit. Okay, yeah, it's pretty bright. Yeah. What about the feet? I like feet. That's why I like John. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to bring him back? I really need this, man. I got mouths to feed. Speaking of mouths, what's that mouth do? Lots of things. I'll do anything, man. I'll do anything, man. Okay, I'll I will bring this man back, but I have three conditions, and I just happen to have them here. The Something Indecent show needs to be way more ghoulish than it currently is. It needs to be the ghoulish show. Okay. Also, I get the soul of every future guest, meaning each guest must be killed on stage at the end of their interviews. Okay, I, we, can, we can work that out. Okay. Oh, yeah. Most importantly, every episode, Max must do a commercial for Real Ale Seltzer. <sighs> the seltzer that makes you feel good. We can do that. We can even do. We can even do a happy hour on Real El Seltzer during the show. A dollar off every Real El Seltzer. We'll do that. We'll do that. Real El. they I'm sure they'll sponsor us. Otherwise, I'm taking his soul back. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll agree. Uh, more ghoulish. It's got to be called the Ghoulish Show. Uh, all the guests get killed and happy hour on Real El Seltzer during the show. A dollar off every Real El Seltzer. All right, I'll do it. Then. Okay, all right, I agree. Come on. Get up. Hey, wake up, goddammit, wake up! Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Max! You're alive! Ah, I ah. Are you deaf? Yes, I am. And I brought you back under three conditions. What's going on? What? Max, Max, he told what happened me, to me. He told me he told you died. But he, uh -huh. he told me that uh the show has to be way more ghoulish and it's gotta be called the ghoulish show. Okay? He told me... I died? You died. Yes, 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 yes. But I brought you back. Uh, the Ghoulish Show, it's got to be the Ghoulish Show now. Way more ghoulish, way more spooky. Um, you have to kill every guest after their interview. What happened to my hill? Uh, it's green. It looks beautiful, man. You're good. You guys died me? <laughs> we died you in death, brother. Uh, just the head? Just the head. Yeah, just the head. Uh, but, but also, uh, the other condition is you have to do a commercial for Real El Seltzer. <laughs> Dollar off. Uh, 7 to 11 p.m. tonight. Every show. You guys made this fake? I, I don't know. 
Who do I have to kill? No, you don't kill anybody. I kill somebody. You kill somebody. Also, do you want some kills? Why? Because I'm ghoulish now? You're ghoulish now. You're ghoulish now, baby. This is mine? It's yours. I just happen to have it. Okay, so I, I left it change. over there by my real ale seltzer. He left it over there by his real L seltzer. So we have a sponsor now? Yeah, we're working on that. Okay. Do I just get naked? Well, I, I, I don't know, man. How those clothes feel on you? They feel awful. Like, they belong to somebody alive. But I, I'm, a, I'm not alive, am I? No, you're an undead host now. Are you, am I getting paid? Uh... <laughs> Yeah. In real ale seltzer. <laughs> seltzer cans. I don't like that shit. Oh, no. I, I mean, to be honest, I've never had it in my life. What does it taste like? But they are in happy hour, uh, 7 to 11 p.m. a dollar off. If I'm undead, can I even drink it? <laughs> we'll try. You have to film a commercial tonight. So. Tonight? Yeah. Okay. How many clothes do I take off? All of them? I have no idea. I don't Is know what you're doing right now. that loud on radio? I don't even know you have to. But this is oh a, my God. a condition, I guess. Did you guys put a fucking ghoulish T-shield on me? Yeah, death was prepared. What else did you do when I was unconscious? I just kicked you, tickled you a little bit. You had an egg, by the way. Do you remember that? Yeah, a really nice egg salesman brought me an egg. He read a nice poem. It was sweet. What? What is this? That's a bag of things that death has bequeathed upon you. It's a new cane with a baby head on it. This is mine? It's yours. Like a, like a host accessory? A yeah, host accessory, yeah. It, it feels like skin. Hold it. Yeah, that's wait, a... Wait, no, wait. If death gave this to me, and I'm undead, I don't know what's going to happen if someone living touches it. Let's see. I, I, I don't even want to try. Do I don't want. I've got. I've got too much going on. I don't want to get fired, man. Let's just let's get this show on the road here. Oh, by the way. Yes, sir. It's it's no longer something indecent. What is it called? The Ghoulish Show. What else is in the back? I have no idea. Okay. Is this going as well as you hoped? <laughs> this is going great. I'm scared. Oh, hey, oh. look. A Blu-ray of a movie called We Need to Do Something. Whoa! Who wrote and directed that? Uh, I wrote it and someone directed it, kind of. Oh, look, I have a stand. Well, things seem to be going swimmingly here. Yeah. I should just shuffle off the stage. Oh, wait, I have something else. It's cold. Uh, oh, shit. It's a can of real El Seltzer. Grapefruit black raspberry. It's cold, and I'm told it refreshes you, but I'm not doing a commercial yet. No commercial yet. It's coming. You're contractually <laughs> obligated to. Okay, so if I don't do it, I, I go back to being dead. Yeah, death is going to come by and, and take you for real. But I'm not alive. I'm undead. You're undead. Okay, but something else doesn't quite feel right. The sign. The sign is all wrong. Let's change it. Let's change the sign. Let's do the ghoulish show. Woo! Get up and down. Tell me the truth. Be the truth. Got these bangs super sharp. You're so toothless. Cold hearted. Yeah, we ruthless. All the ghouls in the cut. Let's get ghoulish. In the graveyard. Acting foolish. Been the dance with the devil to no music. Cold hearted. Yeah, we ruthless. All the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish. Hello, 
Hello and welcome to the Ghoulish Show. I am Max Booth, an undead host. And on today's <laughs> debut episode of the Ghoulish Show, I have a I have a special guest. His name is Michael Lewis Dixon. He's going to be coming up to read in just a moment. But in my show notes, this is the section where I wrote, Say a monologue and write one ladle. I did not do that. So... I mean, I'm just going to say what I said in the beginning of this show that was really painful, but I'm going to say it as if it's spooky. I, uh, I recently got a dog. Okay, cool. A spooky dog named uh, Spooky Frank. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty ghoulish dog. He goes out, he, uh, he skills people, he goes, Rah! and people go, oh my god, what a spooky dog you have. And then I tell them, you have no idea what type of spooky dog this is. This dog has one hell of a kick spot. In fact, it's a spooky kick spot, I would say. Because the only way to get him to, uh, you know, do his little leg kick is if you uh, ghoulishly uh, masturbate him until spooky completion. And you do have to lick him in the eye and that itself is pretty spooky. I don't make the rules, and I don't recommend this, unless you're into spooky crimes committed against dogs. In which case, I do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash PMM Publishing. Check that out if you, uh, if you were interested in anything I just said. I can hook you up. But until then, <laughs> I do have a show to do. I have a guest. I'm undead. This is all news to me. I am really confused, but I'm just going to go right along with it, okay? So, Michael Lewis Dixon, come on up to the stage, Sue. How's it going? It's going all right. Um... You want to do a reading? I, I am told you came prepared to read something. Yes, yes. I, uh, Please go ahead. I have this uh, story that's uh, been rolling around for a while because of true life experience. Its title is Dick Island. Once upon a time, long, long ago, in the faraway land of Detroit, Michigan, I had finally been released from my mandatory supervised probation. I was a free, well-endowed man. I'm not bragging, just stating a fact. I once tried to use my foreskin to hold a stack of quarters, but they kept slipping out. I switched to 50 cent pieces and that solved the problem. Sure, it isn't a very sanitary way to keep my change, but the resulting copious amounts of smegma went great on Ritz crackers. Just like the pumping action from a can of Cheese Whiz. So delicious. Anyhow, I had this hungry python and an urgent need to feed it. At the Wayne State Student Center, I saw her. The one. I had to get to know her, so I stole her backpack. You can learn a lot about someone from the contents of their backpack besides their name and address. Like, for instance, she was studying to be an entomologist, and she loved to draw cute little bugs in the margins of all her notebooks. I wanted to date her, but I knew that I never stood a chance, not without the perfect gift. Flowers and chocolates were out of the question. Everybody does that. I mean, she loves bugs, and there were a ton of them back at my basement level apartment. I had only one jar in the apartment. This old mayonnaise jar i have been trying to fill up with my own jizz, just to see if I could. Kind of a self-challenge. It was the only, only about a half inch deep. Still, the only jar. I made a quick sandwich with that, and I had to go on my bug hunt. Filling a jar with cockroaches isn't easy. The more in the jar, the easier for some of them to escape when adding in others. They go right up your arms, up your sleeves, down your pants. Feels really weird, but kind of nice too. They got a delicate touch. Anyhow, I think that's what gave me the idea when I was taking my evening bath. Cleanliness is next to godliness. 
I was just lying in the water and thinking about how much Name Redacted would love these bugs. The jar was on the bathroom counter, watching them swirling around inside and thinking about Name Redacted. And I started getting a boner. And it popped up and lifted out of the water like a miniature island. I looked at the jar, I looked at my big dick island, and I made a connection. Cockroaches swim okay, but they don't like the water all that much. They'll go to the nearest safe place, a refuge, so to speak. I only plan to pour out a few, but you know, life finds a way. Let's just say that things, got a, things were a bit crowded on Dick Island. The sensation was amazing. My first reaction was to just go with it. In that moment, I fell in love with those roaches. I wasn't going to last long. I felt like Krakatoa about to go off. I dipped down for some relief, hoping to prolong the experience. The population of Dick Island panic swam in all directions. I was scared they might get out of the tub, and then I'd have to start collecting them all over again. I raised Dick Island, thankfully fast enough that most of them turned and swam back to safety. But in my moment of panic, I did not account for a sudden deflation in Dick Island's landmass. The volcano was now somewhat capped from my constricting foreskin. A few of the larger, more successful swimmers became trapped inside the closing dome. You'd think they'd immediately retreat, you know, head back down to shore or something. But instead, they decided to go spelunking down the throat of Krakatoa. I admit, I panicked. You can't judge me too harshly, though. There was a fair amount of pain involved. I leaped out of the tub, water splashing everywhere, cockroaches clinging to my body for their dear lives. The tile floor was slick. My feet shot out from under me. My head hit the floor and everything went dark. I woke up to a churning, fiery pain in my loins, saw cockroaches streaming down the walls, more of them coming across the floor, felt their tiny legs tickling over my skin. Down there, things didn't look right at all. My genitals had undergone a dramatic change. My ball sack was domed up like some demented children's bouncy house erected in one of Dante's circles of hell and designed by Hieronymus Bosch. My prick had been cored out, the head dangled uselessly from a thin and flaccid urethra. The foreskin stretched out and staked down across my belly with dental floss picks like tent flaps. Roaches crawling in and none coming back out. The whole structure pulsed as if they were in there rocking out to some kind of music that I couldn't hear. But I sure did feel it. A cockroach rave. I almost screamed. Almost. But while it burned something awful, it also kind of tickled. It tickled me in a deep and intimate way that I kind of liked. It was that feeling that spread throughout my lower half that stilled my tongue. All my muscles turned to jelly. The light in the room seemed to dim, and then I had the best and longest orgasm of my fucking life. I didn't even have to clean up. The roaches took care of that. Well, a long story short, since that day, I have been in a very happy, lifelong poly relationship with a cockroach swarm. So this is a true story that just you just told us. Is that correct? Absolutely. Wow. Now, do you have? Did any of these cockroaches come to the show to watch this reading? Uh, I've decided that uh, they needed to stay away from the stage because I'm afraid they'll get lost. So radio is cockroach free. If that's what you're trying to claim. Well, yeah, I picked up a few strays when I was in the restroom. But well, we all know. saw the strays. <laughs> all right, I have Mule to ask you in just a minute, but there is a uh, gun being pointed at me from off stage, and I have to do a commercial. So if you would excuse me, Michael. Sure thing. I used to be alive, and then I wasn't. One day, just like. Every other day in this goddamn country we live in, uh, egg delivery man just shows up out of the blue, 
reads you a really sweet poem, gives you an egg, usually they feed them to you if you're lucky, and then you vomit blood and die. But then, if you go one of the lucky ones, you have a, a sweet, sweet friend who doesn't want to lose his job. And he will awful to do anything, including sucking the Grim Reaper's massive cock. And I am told that's what happened when I was dead not that long ago. This could happen to anyone. This just happened to me. You guys witnessed it. It was like 10 minutes ago. I was dead. And now I'm alive. Thanks to my friend. Thanks to the, the Grim Reaper's uh, shaft. But also, thanks to Real Al. South Seal. I have to drink it, right? I have to drink this now. It kind of tastes like what you would expect an undead drink to taste like. It doesn't taste great, but it's not bad. It's almost, it's, all, it's not, I don't, I don't know how to describe this. I don't know if being undead has affected my taste buds. It's really possible. I didn't get a chance to talk to Death before he left because he was already satisfied. He got what he wanted. And I got what I wanted, which was to be brought back to life. And now I'm going to drink this because if I don't, I will die again. Do I have to drink all of it? No, I don't have to drink all of it, so that's great. That's great news for me. But if you want to drink, if you want to drink this, um, you can get a discounted rate inside. What's the discounted rate, Andrew? A dollar off. You get a buck off of this. So is it free? No. How much is it we fill the discount? Uh, I don't know. Five dollars. <laughs> well, if you want to do that... You I guess you could also buy a book at the table if you'd like. We have plenty of spooky books available for sale after the show. It's real money. Um, I'm not going to drink all of this, so if any of you want to drink some of it, it's free. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, last time that happened, I died. But I guess uh, I'm already undead and it can't happen again. I don't know what the rules are of being uh, undead, but I will get to the bottom of them. The bottom of them. At, at some point. But I do have a show to run and I have a guest to interview. I am not positive about the logistics of this. Um, I don't know if I can move this. Let's see. I can. Isn't that great? Very nice. And it tastes fucking great. The blood? The blood's okay, I guess. I'll continue drinking this drink. It's delicious. Please, please buy this drink. They won't sponsor us again. And then I won't make any money. Michael Lewis Dixon, thank you for coming tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. You have a book coming out soon. It's yes, called I, Sick. It's tell, sick. Tell us about this. Um, I've got this book coming out on October 14th. Pre-orders are available. It's called Sick. It's uh, basically... Um, I, 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 it's my own genre. I don't know. Maybe I made it up. A literary Grindhouse. And I was inspired by David Cronenberg's Shivers and meets kind of uh, The Last of Us. So... Any cockroaches involved? Uh, no, but there's fungus. Fungi? Well, is <laughs> it just one fungus? He was the greatest. <laughs> well, tell me well, who's publishing this book and how can people buy it now if they wanted to? Right, so uh, it's coming out from Evil Cookie Publishing, and you can go up to Amazon and do pre-orders of the ebook. Whoa, 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 Amazon. I know. You've and already sucked Death's Dick once today. That wasn't me. 
<laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I cracked but myself up. On October fourteenth, you'll be able to order uh, directly from Eva Cookie for, nice. uh, for the paper. Excellent. And anything else you can tell us about sick? Is the book in fact sick? Uh, it's it starts off sick uh, and gets sicker. All right. Well, everyone, let's give a round of applause for Michael Lewis Dixon. <laughs> Sit down. Don't bow. That's not that type of show. Uh, look behind you. It's the ghoulish show. Back on something indecent, we bow. But this is a new show. It's called the Ghoulish Show, and I am told I don't know if you were listening uh, like 15 minutes ago, but this show now has a new uh, requirement. Every guest has to um, unfortunately die at the end. How do you feel about that? I I was in the bathroom. I'm I'm. I missed that part. I'm just joking with you. Anyway, I do have this new cane. I don't know. I bel I'm feeling this te like telekinetic vibe with him. That his name is a uh, Baby Bob. So this is Baby Bob. And um, one thing I am doing with each guest is when we go to leave, they have to give Baby Bob a kiss. That's a new thing. So if you don't mind, just giving him a kiss. So uh, he's dead, and I don't know if that's a crime if the one who does the homicide is uh, undead. Is there some type of law when you commit a homicide and you also happen to be a ghoul? I don't know. Please welcome back to the stage, Death. I assume you came to collect what belongs to you. Please sit down, sit down. Yeah! I am here to collect my soul. Excellent. Um, so, since you revived me from the hell, I assume. How? Have, what are you? What are your thoughts? Do you think this is going how you wanted? Am I not meeting your criteria? Is this how a ghoul show is meant to be? I'm waiting for this peasant to correct this mic. Thank you, peasant boy. <laughs> I hate the Portuguese. <laughs> whoa, whoa. He looks Portuguese to me. So, do I need to repeat my question? Oh yeah, I was looking at the mustache. Oh, I see. So, this is this has been the Ghoulish Show episode one, as you stated, was required upon my reanimation. Is am I living up to your criteria? Yes, fool. Oh, do you have any notes? Don't do this again. If I don't do this again, what happens to me? I don't know, but these people are going to be happy. <laughs> I've seen death, and I've never seen anything like this. Well, you will death. That's like me saying I've seen Max. Don't talk back. <laughs> you seem kind of cranky. It seems like perhaps you would like to give a reading as well. Is that right? No, I could. I couldn't. <laughs> oh come on! We all know no, death. No, no, I. You guys don't know this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Please give a round of applause for Death the Poet. <sighs> this originated from the deepest depths of the underworld. It's by nerd porn auteur Ernest Klein, author of Ready Player One. Please don't sue. I've noticed that there don't seem to be any porno movies that are made for guys like me. Again, this is Ernest Klein, not me, Death. I'm reading a poem that he wrote about himself. All the porn I've come across was targeted at beer-swilling, sports bar-dwelling alpha males, men who like their women stupid and submissive. <laughs> men who can only get it up for monosyllabic, cock-hungry nymphos with gargantuan breasts and a three-word vocabulary. Adult films are populated with these collagen-injected liposuction women, many of whom have resorted to surgery and self-mutilation in an attempt to look the way they have been told to look. Before you continue, I have some questions. So you say this came from a, an illness client. Is, yeah. he, is he like a co-vocal of yours? How do you know him? 
Uh, yes, he's a co-worker of IMAX. Does he know you were reading his poetry? How did you come upon it? I found it in the deepest depths of the underworld. I said that already. Okay, please continue. I know everyone is enjoying this. Not everybody. <laughs> these aren't real women. They're objects. And these movies aren't erotic. They're pathetic. These vacuum-headed fuck bunnies. Max. Don't turn me on. They disgust me. And it's not that I'm against <laughs> pornography. I mean, I'm a guy. And guys need porn. Fact. This guy's laughing. He's dead, so I don't know what's going on over there. Uh, like a preacher needs pain, like a needle needs a vein. Guys need porn. But I don't want to watch this misogynist, he-man, woman-hater porn. I want porn of movies that are made with guys like me in mind. Guys who know that the sexiest thing in the world is a woman who is smarter than you are. You can have the whole cheerleading squad. I want the girl in the tweed skirt and the horn-rimmed glasses. Betty Finnebowski, the valedor valedictorian. Oh, yes. First, I want to copy her trig homework, and then I want to make mad, passionate love to her for hours and hours until she reluctantly asks if we can stop because she doesn't want to miss Battlestar Galactica. Summer cum laude, baby. That is what I call erotic. But do you ever see that kind of a woman in a contemporary adult film? No. Which is why I'm going to start writing and directing Geek Porno. There's a whole other page, goddammit. <laughs> I shall be the quintessential nerd porn auteur, and the women in my porno movies will be the kind that drive nerds like me mad with desire. I'm talking about the girls that used to fuck up the grading curve. The girls in the Latin Club and the National Honor Society. Chicks with weird clothes, braces, four eyes, and 4.0 GPAs. Brainy, articulate bookworms with Mensa cards in their purses and chips on their shoulders. My porn starlets will come in all shapes and sizes. Hey! Whoa, hey! Whoa, 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 hey, whoa. Hey, hey, hey! What's going on here? You're reading my poem. What, is this Ernest Klein? I'm Ernest Klein. He, 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 hey! I thought he was a lot taller. That's my poem. Oh. I wrote that in Ready Player One. What are you doing? I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue uh. the whole underworld. I don't like his Police. guns. Police! <laughs> Alright. He's got guns! He's pointing some guns at me! Please. Thank you. How would you like two uh, bodies to take back with you? I'd say it's about one and a half for sure. have any end credits music that's Thank just you. it oh. we have foolish. we have a table you can buy books maybe uh, death is selling a signed copy of that poem if you want to buy it from him and remember um, dollar off uh, real ale seltzer the good news is you're undead and alive somewhat but the bad news is I'm probably still getting fired <laughs> thank you <laughs>